So I had been on the job for about a year. And after a really long day of running calls and doing other things, we had gotten a call for a lift assist. And if you're not familiar with that term or what that is, it's essentially a call for exactly what it sounds like. Somebody has fallen down or they just need help getting up or something along those lines. It's usually just a public assist call. Well, on this particular call, it was probably eight or nine o'clock in the evening. We showed up at the house and this person was uh, less than friendly, we'll put it that way. And where they were positioned, they had kind of fallen down between a wall and a chair, kind of like a lounge. And they were surprisingly rude for the fact that they called us to come help them. So after having to call multiple people to come help get this person out of there, as we're ending our interaction, instead of ending the interaction by saying, hey, thanks for your help, or hey, have a good night, or something like that, this person ended our interaction by saying, well, it's a good thing you guys don't really do much all day. And I remember leaving that evening thinking to myself, first of all, why would anybody say something like that? But second, that person probably has no idea how busy we've been all day. And then it dawned on me that that's a problem with a lot of the general public. A lot of people don't know what firefighters do all day outside of the obvious, which is fight fires. So when people say things like, well, the amount of fires in the country nationally are down, so you guys don't really do much, they probably don't know what else fire departments do. So in this video, what I want to do is I want to go over 10 different things that firefighters and fire stations nationwide all do every single day. So if you're new to the fire service, you can expect that when you come in, you're going to be doing these things. And maybe if you have nothing to do with the fire service and you're just interested in, hey, what do you guys actually do throughout the course of the day? Because again, Hollywood and TV shows don't really do us any favors either by just showing people sitting around and chatting and then they get up and go on some overly dramatic call that almost never happens and then come back and go back to that. That's not the real world. So in this video, I'm going to go over those 10 things. And if you like this video and you find this useful and helpful, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel, and let's get right into it. So the first one is obviously the most blatantly obvious of what firefighters do, and it's we respond to fires, right? That's the number one priority of a fire department is to protect life and safety, primarily through by way of fires. That's obvious. The second one is we first respond to EMS, rescue, hazardous material, all sorts of incidents. The modern fire service is moving more and more towards integrating with EMS. Most fire departments have fire, EMS, and rescue in their logo, and the majority of what they do is EMS, whether it be EMTs or paramedics. If you've watched this channel before, you've heard me talk about how I, where I work, we're all paramedics, and so we, we do ALS calls every single day. That's what we do. But a large majority of the calls are that as well as other things, rescues. Every time there's a car accident, every time there's uh, some sort of incident like a drowning or somebody falls from a certain height, fire departments are always the people that are either there to treat them or they're there to first respond if they, if whatever fire department where you live has separate EMS and fire, a lot of times if, if there's a car accident, the fire department will show up to block traffic. Or there are also, I believe there's apps out now that tell people when there's, there's somebody's having a, a full arrest or a heart attack. And what a lot of fire departments will do is they will first respond on those things. So fire departments don't just fight fires. We do a lot of other things and other instances that we respond to as well. The third one is we do a ton of training. Now, training can mean a whole bunch of things. It can mean, obviously, fire training where we go through, we call them evolutions. All sorts of evolutions, whether it be with ladders, hoses, trucks, engines, rescue evolutions. There's all sorts of things that we do where we essentially go through uh, scenarios that we may come across when we're on a scene, when we're on an incident, when we're in a fire. And we just kind of replicate those the best that we can so that we get used to it. As the saying goes, practice makes perfect. And so that's the idea behind that. But there's also so all sorts of other let's say EMS training, we will bring, we'll coordinate with uh, the local hospitals, the local medical control, and they'll bring people out and we'll do days and we'll do events going over uh, things that would be more medically related. Um, for example, they'll do one thing where they, they bring out cars and they have uh, people that act as though they're part of a trauma scenario and you have to treat these trauma patients. That's more, that's kind of like a mixture of rescue and EMS. 
but that's something else that happens as well. And then finally, there's other types of training. Where I work, we're right up on the lake, so we have to do water rescue training quite a bit. Um, by the lake, there's some sheer cliff faces, so we'll do training with ropes every once in a while. Other things that you don't typically come across every single day, but you need to stay fresh on those. The next one is classes and continuing education. So we take, uh, we're mandated to do a certain number of CE hours for our fire and for our paramedic. Now, again, if, you're, if your fire department doesn't do EMS as well, they're probably just gonna do fire, but there's also classes and CEs required for other specialties within the fire department. Now, I made a video about other specialties that you can do, and I'll put it up here. Um, but if you're a fire inspector, you have to stay up on a certain amount of CEs. If you're a fire instructor, if you're an EMS instructor, if you're a hazmat specialist, if you're a rope tech, um, all of these different higher level certifications or other certifications require continuing education, not just for yourself, but essentially for your, for your state certificate or license, depending on what you have. Number five, we work out a lot, or at least we should. Um, Firefighting is one of the few jobs where your physical abilities actually can seriously impact how well you do your job, right? It's different than somebody that works in an office somewhere or somebody that has a sales job or something like that in the sense of by nature of our job, we're going to be wearing 70 to 80 pounds of gear anytime we go to a fire. Just to start, that's not even talking about once we're in the fire, it's just talking about what we're wearing on the way there. So Obviously, that means we have to work out, we have to stay physically fit, and we have to stay strong. And that requires daily commitment. Uh, number six, this one is one that we do every single day that a lot of people might not realize how much goes into this. And this is vehicle, gear, and station maintenance. So these vehicles, fire departments have a variety of vehicles ranging from just normal cars to SUVs, pickup trucks. Uh, obviously fire engines, ladder trucks, ambulances, rescue trucks. Uh, where I work, we have um, uh, uh, some, some departments have boats. If they have water, we have jet skis. Um, so these machines, these vehicles break all of the time and there's something going wrong with them almost daily. And that's just part of the job. These are very big vehicles that take a beating and that we're firefighters and fire departments are very hard on these vehicles. So, Every morning we have to check every single one of these vehicles to make sure that they're running properly, that there's no major issues with them. And with that, we have to check the majority, if not all of the gear on every single vehicle to make sure it's ready to go for that day, just in case you need it. In addition to all those vehicles and all that gear, we need to check our own personal gear, our radios, our SCBA packs, our masks, our flashlights, make sure they're charged. Make sure there's nothing wrong with our gear. Make sure somebody didn't take something out of there inadvertently thinking it was theirs and now we go on a fire and we're missing an important tool. Maybe we're missing a glove or a hood or something like that. So we have to check all of our own personal stuff as well. So there's a lot of maintenance that goes along with a lot of the vehicles. Also there's station maintenance. A lot of fire departments, uh, the cities or the districts that they work for require the department to maintain the actual physical building in the surrounding area. A lot of departments, they'll they're required for cutting their own grass and managing all of that. Um, so it just depends on where you work, but there's a lot of just general day-to-day -day maintenance that happens as well. Public services. Now, public services include a lot of different things, and every department will be slightly different, and some departments will offer some things that others won't. So for example, car seat installations. A lot of people don't realize that fire departments will have people that are actual car seat techs so that if you are you have a child or you're expecting a child or maybe you're a grandparent and you know you're going to be shuttling kids around a lot and you're not comfortable putting the car seat in your own car, you can go find people that are licensed technicians that will do that. And some fire departments do that, some do not. It just depends on where you live, depends on where you work. Pill drop off. Um, if you have old prescription pills. Now, again, not every fire department does this. I know a lot of police departments do this as well. Or if you have old prescriptions laying around, you don't want them to fall into the hands of, of children or something like that, you can just drop them off at the fire department or the police department, it just depends on your city, and they will dispose of them properly. Smoke detector batteries, this is a big one. Um, a lot of people that have trouble getting up and down on ladders or may have balance issues, a lot of times where I work, we have a, a large elderly population. 
and they're just not comfortable changing the batteries in their smoke detector. So people call us pretty much daily to come out and change smoke detector batteries for them just because they simply can't reach. In addition to the smoke detector batteries, um, I know some departments we used to, I don't think we do anymore, I'm not sure actually, at least I haven't done it in a while. Um, we used to have a program where if a person or a family wasn't able to afford a smoke detector in their home and they needed a smoke detector, the city would or the department would provide that for them. Um, like I said, again, all of this depends on, on your city, on your department, what they do. Another service that's offered quite a bit is um, fire extinguisher disposal. A lot of people, when they don't know what to do with a fire extinguisher, will call and just say, what do I do with this? And a lot of times they'll just come drop them off and we'll take care of it for you. So there's all sorts of different public services that the fire department provides, just little things here and there. Um, that are a benefit to you for being a taxpayer in that city or that area. Number eight is fire prevention. Now this is a big one. You've heard a lot of people talk about how the number of fires nationwide has decreased over the years and they're right. And that's a good thing. That means fire prevention is doing their job. That means we have better building codes. We're holding uh, businesses and people and, and landowners and landlords accountable for how they're, they're they store things in, in their buildings, uh, what the level of construction is like, if it's up to code. Um, and with fire prevention comes a lot of education, whether it be to students or being students, meaning school children, elementary and high school students, but also just the general community. For example, one of the things that we do where I work is we do a uh, community fire academy, I believe is what we call it. And what we do is we, it's a sign up thing. Unfortunately, we're only able to do one fire academy and then COVID happened and then they kind of put that on hold for now, but I'm sure they'll start it up again at some point. Um, but what they would do is they would invite people from the city to sign up for a fire academy that would be taught and put on by guys that I work with. And uh, they would just put people through an academy, teach them all about fire safety, uh, let them see what it's like to be a firefighter for a few weeks. And I think it was a one night a week class. It was a pretty cool event, good community outreach. Um, but along with that is fire prevention education. Also along with fire prevention is inspections. If you are a landlord or a business owner, I'm sure you've dealt with a fire inspector coming through at some point. Um, but also walkthroughs. And a lot of people get inspections and walkthroughs mixed up. Inspections is where the fire inspector for that city or the fire marshal actually goes and looks to make sure everything is up to code. Now, what a lot of departments will do and where I work included, what we will do is as a crew, we will go out into the community, we'll pick maybe three different businesses that day and they'll, they'll know ahead of time and we'll just say, hey, we're coming to familiarize ourselves with your building. God forbid there ever be a situation where that place, particular place catches on fire and we're there, at least we've walked through the building, we know where the, the panel is, we know where particular hazards may or may not be, and we keep a database of all those things that are going on with all the buildings in the city. So it's not a traditional inspection, but it's also a walkthrough that's more educational for us in case we ever need to be in that building. Uh, I just touched on this education. This is a big, big thing. And this kind of ties in with fire prevention as well. This is number nine. We do a lot of community education, primarily by way of teaching children through uh, uh, fire safety talks. Uh, we go to the elementary schools. The, I don't think we've done preschools. I think that might be a little too young. Um, but all sorts of cities and districts and departments out there all have all sorts of different things that they do to engage with kids in the area, teach them not to play with matches, um, teach them you know, to, ha to have two ways out, have a, 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 uh, a fire plan for your home, making sure you have smoke detectors. There's all sorts of stuff that goes into uh, child education when it comes to fire safety. Um, so that's a big thing. Again, you heard me talk about the Community Fire Academy. That's a great public outreach thing, but also um, has a large element of education of what to do, what to look out for, uh, fire safety in the home. And then a lot of, a lot of departments as well will do community-based CPR classes. CPR is a big thing these days, especially teaching things like no hand CP or all hand CPR, I, I'm sorry. And um, so a lot of times fire departments will offer those classes for for free or for a very, very low price, a discounted price for citizens in whatever town or district that you live. So we do a ton of different educational things like that as well. The other thing that we like to do too, at least where I work in the surrounding area, 
We'll do an event annually called Big Trucks. I know we're not the only people in the area that do this, um, but essentially all the big trucks, uh, whether it be from public service, like the leaf, uh, the leaf grinders, um, the police officers will bring out all their vehicles. We'll bring out all our vehicles. Life Flight will always come and land one or two helicopters during the course of it. And we'll do this big event where everyone in the city and all the surrounding areas are invited and they can come check out the trucks. We open them up. We have people around explaining what's going on and what the different parts of the truck are. It's a big event, especially for families and children. They really like that. But again, that kind of plays into education as well as community outreach. And then the last one is public engagement and events. Now, I just touched on big trucks. I didn't realize that probably would have fit better in public engagement, um, but we do a lot of that kind of stuff. I would say before the whole COVID thing happened, uh, probably weekly we were doing station tours for a variety of people, whether it be people that just randomly walk up and say, hey, I've never been here before. Can you tell me about the fire department? Can you show me the trucks? Can you show me the station? And we would do that all the time, but we would also do those for planned events. Planned events being Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, um, small community groups uh, for kids, for adults, all sorts of people. We would constantly be doing station tours. Um, we do all, we're engaged with a lot, and this is most fire departments, engage with a lot of just the things that the city does. For example, where I work, they have a thing uh, where Santa goes out and he rides down to the lake on a fire truck and that's just part of part of community engagement um, just public events when you become a firefighter whether you like it or not you are going to be a representative to the community of that fire department because you will be so engaged with your community so those are just 10 different things basic things that firefighters and fire departments do every single day. Obviously, some departments will do more, some departments will do less, depending on the station, the city, the department, and the culture of where you are. So hopefully you found that helpful or educational. And if so, please give this video a thumbs up, give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video.